My people, welcome back to the new season 2020 of your favorite You and I talk show with your favorite Luis Uacho in the house. My people, you know how much I love comedy, right? You know how much I call myself an undercover comedian? Today we came to see real comedians, all right? <laughs> Do this outside. Oh, oh my god, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Okay, so we're coming to the coffee kettle caveman cafe to do the comedy. Oh, you didn't see me. You didn't see me. You didn't see me like that. Okay, I'm here, right here, right here, right here. All right, my people, we're here with a tall, tall guy. Okay, I'm having to stand on like one meter of, of stairs mm -hmm. to be on this level with him. Yeah, I hate you right now. Thank you. <laughs> My height is my strongest feature in everything I do. And people having to fake it near me with camera tricks is just my favorite. Absolutely. So what brought you to comedy? Uh, my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is, uh, is a, a full-time stand-up comedian. He was a pro before I even started. And when I met him, I'd been thinking of giving it a shot. And he was doing a, a club show here in Vancouver. And I asked him how to get started. He gave me some of the just rough outline tips. And here I am now. Nice. So you mean your sister knows how to pick the right man? Yes, very much so. <laughs> That's her strongest ability. My strongest asset is being tall. Her strongest <laughs> asset is choosing good men. He's so beautiful. Like, so do you want to drop his name or not? Sterling Scott. Oh. Yeah, he's a comedian in Alberta. And our CBC Debaters episode uh, taped last year and is on a regular repeating episode on CBC Radio. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is your comedy about? Uh, my comedy is about, uh, it's a lot about my job, my relationships, uh, as well as my appearance. I, I'm well aware that I have a little bit of a look about me. Like, oh, really? Uh, just at any time, I look like I'm about to introduce the features of a new phone. So, <laughs> I'm pretty I'm familiar with that. So it's very self-aware and a little bit self-deprecating. Yeah, yeah, And just yeah, kind of yeah. goofy and fun. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It feels unfair, though. Like, when you're trying to better yourself as a sexual man, like, it, it's, it's challenging because it feels like there's a lot of unfair standards. Like, one thing that if you're a man like me, you get made fun of a lot of is stamina. Stamina is a thing that a man needs to be able to do. They need to last a long time. And that's not fair because sex is hard. It is a hard thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's very physical. Stamina is not a fair metric. Like, if you want, like, to just for an example, there is a physical challenge, like an actual physical challenge called the 60-second plank, which is a challenge that is hard, that most people can't do, and that is where you hold yourself up by your hands and your feet and nothing else, and need to maintain that for 60 seconds. And dudes get made fun of if they can't maintain that for 20 minutes. Like, that's <laughs> what is an unfair metric. And you don't get, don't get to hold still during the sex part, not at all. You need to make sure you're maintaining a rhythm that is as precise as a metronome. <laughs> it's like a woman's sexuality is complicated. It's an entire orchestra. If you're half a beat off, the conductor's going to be like, no, no, from the top, do it again. <laughs> What is your big dream in comedy? Is there like, oh. who is the big comedian that inspires you, that has been like, okay, that guy, I would love to be like that guy. Uh, big fan of John Mulaney. I think mm. he's he's my big uh, kind of aspiration. Mm -hmm. Because he's certainly at a level well beyond, but mm. but if I can get even close to something like that, I think that would go nice. well. Nice. Yeah. So what is your top three then? Ooh, that's always a really tough question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
the uh, Louis C.K.'s Live at the Beacon Theater was my first big album, and then he died, essentially. And then John Mulaney has been a really big one recently that's a rise to the top for me. Yeah. And uh, Jim Jeffries, I think, would be mm. the other one on that list. I yeah. love Louis C.K. Yeah, me too. He's so funny. Very much so. So funny. <laughs> I would love to meet him one time. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. maybe go to his show. Yeah, and make Do you sure. know if he's ever coming to Vancouver? I have no idea. Yeah. No, I, I went to his 2017 show, and then there was controversy, and then yeah. you have to meet him in public with other people now. Oh, I hate this controversy now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a school where once you get into controversy, you could just go to that school mm -hmm. and everything is forgiven. Well, and come back and start from zero. Like it depends what you did, though, because yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. we have that school. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. it's called prison. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think when you do something bad and you have to go to a place and learn what you did and take response, yeah, that's jail. We have that. It's a thing, and it's what it's a, it exists. Absolutely. Oh my God! Thank you so much for oh, talking you're, to you're us. You're very welcome. Have a great evening, oh, man. Thank you very kill, much. It, kill it, kill <laughs> thank it, you. kill it. All right, my people, we're here right outside the Kato Caveman Cafe where the comedy event is happening and this is one of the comedians already and her name is Jessica Pigeon. Nice to meet you. Is that Pigeon? Is that French? Very. All right, I see, <laughs> Extremely. I see. I see. But it's not a classy kind of French. Mm. Not paintings and pastries. Very much pickup trucks and poutine. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So does that mean that you do your comedy in French? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I could if I wanted to, yeah. but uh, the people of Vancouver have n thus far not appreciated it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so just in case somebody from Paris is listening, what would you tell them funny in French? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Ça fait des boulous, c'était rigolo. Uh, oh my goodness. I, I wish I could tell you that that was clever, but it was not. Mm. <laughs> that was a rude children's song about farting. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, that is so funny. You're so funny. So were you born funny or did you have to train for this? It took a while to learn how to talk. <laughs> it, the standing of stand-up took me a while. Mm. Actually, I was very well known as a child for being desperately unfunny. <laughs> like I used to, I wanted to be funny so badly because uh -huh. my mom was hilarious. Oh. She was a ventriloquist. She oh. had a little dummy. His name was Melvin. Oh no! And I, I dressed just like him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, every day I would, I would go up to my mom. I'd tell her my joke. I'd be like, "How is that?" Yeah. And she'd go, "Wait, like, was that funny?" Yeah. No. <laughs> My mother looks me dead in the eye. No. No. Oh my God. So does she like you now more than the? Uh, yes. The, the, the thing? Hecklers <laughs> cannot scare me. <laughs> I've been through worse. I hear you. So what are you looking for tonight? Um, I'm just looking forward to having a little bit of time on stage. Mm. This the comedy cave is very warm, mm -hmm. so it's a very feel good audience. Yeah, it's very charming, and I I feel safe here. It's like the womb. Nice, 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 <laughs> nice. And what is your ultimate dream when it comes to what you're doing right now? Um, uh, as a person with ex severe anxiety, uh, especially social anxiety, I want people. Especially people who are extremely judgmental to all watch me in huge rooms while I sweat more than I ever have in my life. <laughs> That's the dream. I want as many people as possible to be staring at me in case I fuck up. <laughs> Blip! I want to be famous before I get cancelled. <laughs> I wish you all the best, man. You're so funny. I can't wait to see some of it on oh, stage. No. <laughs> well, that will be fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. New Yorkers are also the friendliest people I have ever met. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. They're not nice. Mm -hmm. They're not polite, but they are super friendly. Mm -hmm. If you are lonely in New York City, Go outside and state an opinion. <laughs> you, can, you can talk to anybody about anything, about the weather 
are the rats or how the weather is affecting the rats. <laughs> <laughs> New Yorkers have two basic modes, too busy to blink and totally down for a 15 minute conversation with a complete stranger about zoning restrictions. <laughs> is a very different place. People here are nice. They're polite, but they are not friendly. You can stand on another passenger's foot for a full 10 minutes on the Sky Train. They won't say anything. But if you make more than three seconds of incidental eye contact, that is assault. My people, my people, Vancouver by night, what you know about that? We just, she, we just thought she was gorgeous. That's the only reason why we saw it. You, you can continue your day. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening, you know, all the funny people in Vancouver. Well, not all, but some of them. <laughs> Were you born funny? Uh, no. Okay. No, I wasn't born funny. I was born in a very funny city. Mm. A culture where I grew up in a city called Amritsar. Uh, it's uh, the wit and humor is in the very air. But I wasn't a natural. Mm. I had to cultivate it. So I've never, do, I, I've never tried improv. I don't think I can do that. But uh, I am a playwright. So I, I know how to write stuff so, and perform stuff. So. Yeah, I, I, I've trained myself. It's not natural. Okay. <laughs> this is motivating for people who think that you have to be born funny, you have to be naturally funny to be a comedian. Oh, no. I was picked on all, all my childhood because I didn't have that. Mm. So, no, you don't have to be funny. You have to be disciplined. Mm, nice, <laughs> yeah. nice, nice, nice. So what attracted you to comedy, like specifically? Oh, I... I uh, I do everything. I'm I'm a man of stage. I make plays. I write plays. I produce plays. I've acted. I've made films. Uh, I've made. I've written for television. So, comedy was something I did way back in my college years when I was like 19 or 20, and that was fun to do. And then you know, life took its normal course and uh, did a lot of things. I have a couple of doctorates, by the way. <laughs> And that's not a joke. <laughs> Speaking of culture shock, though, it's not the first time I heard that term. Uh, the moment I got my permanent resident visa, the Korean government sent me lots of emails like telling me how to deal with culture shock, like, you know, lack of community, isolation. We have Facebook, we have community, right? And, and, and the, the one thing about, there was one email about that was that, oh, Canadians are not afraid of public display of affection. So you might find people kissing each other publicly. And since you come from a conservative culture, India, you might be offended by that. First of all, I come from a culture that gave the world Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I will see two white people kissing. By the way, when you're in India, the whole of Canada is white. <laughs> and the, every white dude is a Christian. So pretty much like Chalavak. Okay. I'll see two white people kissing and I'll be offended. That's not culture shock, that's free porn. <laughs> so my comedy is the, is the subversion of stereotypes. So I don't play to the ethnic stereotypes, I subvert them. Mm. Right. So right. Oh, okay. I'm not a defensive comic, let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah, so I don't tell people that I'm sorry that I'm Canada. I tell people you should be glad that I'm in Canada. <laughs> you should be thanking God that I have come to Canada. That's what my comedy is about. Right? So what's the best thing about doing this job and what motivates you? Uh, meeting new people and making connections and I really love um, connecting comedians with opportunities and you know like things that are like of no gain to me but like watching somebody get an opportunity because I just happen to know somebody or you know and so that's always fun and uh, watching the room grow and you know just week after week the hustle is what keeps me going you know Absolutely. yeah are comedians grateful or do they forget about you no, I think that they're pretty grateful. I mean, some of them for sure are just like kissing my ass for opportunities, but I can smell that a mile away. But as long as you're like, you know, a nice person and you're funny, you yeah. know, I'll always book you. And, you know, I, I'm all about like 
being professional, mm. you know? So what can you tell like people like me who are scared of doing comedy, but they think they're funny, right? Um, think about if like comedy is something you really want to do like for a career or if you just want to go do it and like have fun. And I think that if you like want to do it as a career, you have to, you owe it to yourself to go and try it and uh, see if you're any good. And uh, don't judge it by the first time, judge it by like 10 times and then find out if you really want so to. So you it. have to die 10 times before you can. Oh, I mean, like if you're succeeding like 10% of the time, you know, that's enough to keep a lot of people going. It's kind of oh, crazy. Really? Yeah. That is how good comedians are, like the real good ones. Yeah. That's how good they are. Yeah, I think laughs per minute is a very important thing for being a comedian. And if you're like not getting a lot of laughs per minute, you've got to have a really big laugh at the end of your mm. tirade or whatever you're saying, mm. you know? So yeah, nice. I don't know. And be different. I mean, like that's the biggest thing is, nice. you know, don't go up there and try to emulate somebody who already exists. Mm. Stand on your own piece of land, your own oh. island. So this requires for people to know themselves. Yeah. Oh, you have to be totally self-aware. In fact, like most comedians are like just obscenely overly critical of themselves. And that's mm. what makes a great comedian a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. Are you guys on social media? Yeah, some of you? Some of you, okay. Uh, I am, as you can imagine, you probably got that already. <laughs> I love attention, so I'm like, oh, I can get that there? Great. Uh, <laughs> Come on, people right here at the comedy club. Oh my God, we're having so much fun. And this is a comedian all the way from New York. What's yep. her name? Laura Sogar. Yay. From New York City. New York City. What brings you to Vancouver? Uh, we came over here for a couple of days of vacation. I've been able to do, uh, I, one of my boyfriend is, was on the show as well. He's also a comedian. So we were able to do a bunch of shows in the city. It was really fun. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I got to see your show. It was so funny. You're oh, so funny. You're so kind. Thank you. How so polite here. Two comedians in the same house. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. It's nice because we're able to go to sets together at night and stuff like that. So and give each other, or he gives me a lot of feedback. I give him feedback. He's a guy, you know. <laughs> nice, but it's like you don't need to go outside for laughter. You got the laughter. Exactly. The yeah. Exactly. It's really nice. But then we come here and we get to see like a lot of extremely funny Canadians being here and yes. stuff like that. So it's been. It was a really fun trip. Nice. Do you ever steal each other's jokes? <laughs> I don't think his jokes. I don't think our jokes will work for one another. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think so. I see, I see. What is your big dream about comedy? Do you dream? How big do you want to make? Uh, you know, for me, comedy is a way to just make a lot of people laugh. So as long as I'm doing that, I'm going to keep bigger crowds, I guess. More people. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So what got you started in comedy? Is there something that pushed you? And then who is yeah. the ultimate idol comedian? Uh, my boyfriend, Matthew Broussard, would have to be <laughs> legally required. <laughs> right, yeah. Huge, just idol of mine. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's a good looking guy. Too, I know, right? I know, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's great. Uh, I started doing comedy because I have a lot of random thoughts in my head and I'm sick of not telling them to people. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, <laughs> Canada. Totally, absolutely. So what is your wish going forward right now? Going forward, I want to go back to New York and do more shows and then eventually come back to Vancouver funnier. Absolutely. Right? What is your name? So My name is Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. I'm from Brazil. I'm performing here tonight. Yes. Uh, you can call me Jack Joy. Jack that's joy. my stage name. Nice, Jack Joy. So that does that involve any joy? Yes, for sure. Like I'm doing this to just to have a good time. I see, I see, I see, I see. What made you become a comedian? Like you were like, I'm so funny, I should become a comedian. Uh, like I was just walking the streets and they have an invitation. Do you think you're funny? Yeah. Why you don't try? Yeah. And I tried because I was really drunk. Yeah. And oh my gosh, it was so funny. I was like, I I want to do this for life. Yeah. And that's how it happens. That is so beautiful. <laughs> so how did you find out about Susie and how awesome she is? And oh. then start doing her events? Oh, because I, I saw online on Facebook mm -hmm. and also on Instagram yeah. a lot like a uh, flyer saying about the uh, late night. Yeah. And I, I think it's so powerful to see women doing comedy. 
So I was like, I want to do that. I want to see more. And that's how I, I discovered. Absolutely. Is comedy popular in Brazil or is this something that you discovered here? It's popular now. Mm -hmm. I think like for the past three, four years, yeah. it started becoming more more common. Okay. Uh, but doing, I never thought about doing by myself. So I just started having this dream here. Marlon Brano in the house, what are you saying? No, come on, you can't say that on TV. <laughs> no way, are you crazy? No, we can't show that. We can't show it, definitely cannot show that. Say something that we could show the kids on TV, because this is, this is TV for everybody. This is not a like XXX, even though it's happening tonight, it's not a late night talk show. So say something that we could show everyone. Okay, say something. Okay, that's it. This is how this interview ends. I, I'm, I can't interview you anymore. Ciao. <laughs> so, have you always been a caveman, or this is new? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a chemist. <laughs> yeah, I used to cook, but not, you know, <laughs> not this kind. Yeah, yeah. I'm a chemist. I used to work in oil industry, drilling. Yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah, here I like to have a like a simpler kind of like uh, connecting with people. Yeah, that's that's why why I'm here to connect with people and you know serve. Yes. I like to serve. So what do you like about Vancouver apart from the fact that you have such a beautiful cafe and it's so beautiful and everybody loves coming here? Uh, yeah, this. Ah, uh, this like. I call it the pearl, oh. like the pearl and the planet. Oh. Uh, it's, it's very different, Vancouver. Uh, you know, they talk about like multicultural, but, but there's something really uh, beautiful about it, very special. Like the way I've been treated, I feel like home. I meet a lot of Canadian comedians in the United States, and uh, they're good. They're, there's a lot of very funny Canadian comics, and I think I understand why now. Is y'all are the most supportive crowds I've ever yeah. performed. Yeah. This is my impression of a Canadian heckle. You're doing great! Yeah. <laughs> One thing that's cool about Vancouver crowds is um, they're sharp, they're smart, and they're young. So there's a lot of comedy that works with them that's very, that's very fun to do. Uh, but typically, once you get that, that, those types of traits, you then have a higher sensitivity. I did not find that with Vancouver crowds. They were both smart, sharp, young, and uh, as well as able to joke about... Uh, They're willing to follow you. Right, yeah, You're down some there. uncomfortable... Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was, uh, that was really cool. Um, and then really supportive crowds, because yeah. Canadians are just so gosh darn polite. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, you're great. Yeah, I just, I've never felt so affirmed in New York. They're like, be funny right now. <laughs> yeah. I see. Who is your comedian, your idol, the comedian that you admire and you're like, that the guy. most? John Stewart. Mm. John Stewart's the oh, best. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he's passionate and sincere yeah. and still funny at the same time. It's hard to be both. And yeah, he did that. Yeah. And he's so smart. Yeah, very smart. Yes. Absolutely. And and doesn't downplay it, doesn't hide that. So your girlfriend is funny. Yes, she is. Yeah. How is that? Having a, such a funny girlfriend? Do you feel a little bit of, uh, you know, and you both doing comedy. Is yeah. There a little bit of competition. Oh yes, very yeah. much, very much. We have uh, we have territory disputes over jokes because sometimes we'll be saying stuff in conversation, and we'll have an idea. We're like, uh, uh who gets to keep that one? Yeah. So that's that's the only hard part. But otherwise, it's very exciting. Uh, we can we can write together now. We review each other's sets, which is really cool, um, and it's been it's been really fun. It's nice. really fun both sharing it. Everyone told me, like, uh oh, uh, but. Yeah, it's been it's been nothing but fun. Maybe we'll fight later tonight. Yeah. You think we'll fight later? Did I say something already that we're gonna fight about? Like, what did you mean by? <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So, what is your big dream? What do you wish eventually? How far you want to take this? How far do I want to take it? Um, I don't know. I just want to a day at a time. Um, I, I I'm just happy that I get to keep doing it. Yeah. And um. Try to appreciate the uh, the present and, and the, the chance to perform for people. All right, 
I'm so happy that you're doing it. You Thank you so much. So funny. You Thank so you very funny. much. I got married recently, uh, which is nice and everything, but at the point that we've gotten engaged, we've been dating for 10 years already. Like a full decade, and that's too long, I was told. <laughs> that's far too long. <laughs> like, I don't know why we both waited for that amount of time before making things official. I think we just, like, that both been dating long enough that we had both aged to the point that neither of us were comfortable dating ever again. <laughs> like, ten years is a long time. We both met when we were very young and looking our best, and then somewhere in that time frame, my hairline became very afraid of my eyebrows. <laughs> I'm not joking about. I'm sure she's got things she's self-conscious with. I think we just had this moment where we looked at each other and we're just like, I'm pretty okay with you. I think you're pretty okay with me. I'm not really interested in learning what anyone else's opinion is at this point. So how about we get a ring, make this thing official, and just enjoy each other's mediocrity until we both die. How about that? It'll be lovely. Well, it was a real surprise come through. I think the team really pulled together, and uh, we didn't really know what was going to happen in the second half, but in the first half, we really, you know, just brought it through together, and the big thing is we were a team, and the big thing about being a team is you got to be a team, and I think that's what we did tonight. You were so amazing. Thanks so much. I'm so impressed, man. Thank you. Thank you. I love football. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Rossum Comedy if you want to have, uh, you know, a really big laugh and a nice casual environment. Uh, but there's so much comedy all over Vancouver, and you should really go and check out some of the world-class comedy in the city because we do have one of the best comedy cities in the whole world. So go out and check it out. You and I talk, show your favorite. We're done, okay? Go home, keep your laughter alive. We, we, we're gonna keep bringing in more laughter to you, my people, all right? Because we love laughing, and you know you love it too, right? You know you love it. Okay, good night.